warmth. It's often something we look forward to after a chilly winter. Most of us live in regions where, during the summer, we can go outside and enjoy the weather in shorts and a t-shirt. Except there's one place in the world where this can't be done, and we're worried it might not stay that way. Antarctica has been losing over 100 kilometers cubed of ice each year since 2002, and this rate is accelerating. The Antarctic Peninsula is one of the most quickly warming places in the world, thanks to what could be a variety of reasons. Meanwhile, the West Antarctic ice sheet is thinning rapidly. If this ice sheet collapses, then sea levels will rise, as expected. But how far? How much will we be affected? That's what scientists are working to discover right now. Let's start simple. How do ice shelves melt? It's not like really melt like an ice cube. Thinner ice shelves are more perceptible to cracking. When this happens, water from meltwater ponds drains into these cracks during the summer. Water expands when it freezes into these cracks, stretching them and allowing the ice shelf to disintegrate. As opposed to the accelerating melting in the west, eastern Antarctica seems to be experiencing little warming. However, a more recent result shows that there has been more ice loss in this region than previously thought. You may have heard of this issue before, and you may also have heard that surface melting is actually decreasing while loss of mass is accelerating. This seems contradictory at first, that scientists are just making things up. In fact, there is an explanation, and it does make sense. Ice flow, when ice moves toward the Antarctic coast, happens with or without melting. Ice shelves essentially hold back glaciers, slowing their movement to the ocean. As these shelves deteriorate, these glaciers are given a fast path to the ocean, thus causing a loss of mass without melting. Meltwater from above and seawater from below have been seeping in between Antarctica's ice sheets, lubricating ice streams and causing them to flow more quickly out to sea. Since the 1990s, we have been able to use satellite data to determine the annual movements of the Pine Island Glacier. It was found that the grounding line, where the bottom of the glacier comes in contact with the ground, was rapidly retreating toward land, meaning the glacier was losing mass. The same is true for other glaciers. Ice shelf collapses have also been a problem. Ice shelves are basically part of the glacier extending beyond the grounding line, the most vulnerable parts to warming seas. It took just three weeks to crumble a 12,000-year-old ice shelf called Larsen B in 2002. Data showed that ice streams behind Larsen B accelerated significantly, showing how ice can leave the Antarctic without even having time to melt. Temperatures don't even have to rise above freezing point for this continent to be affected. Whether or not Antarctica melts or falls into the ocean doesn't matter. The water mass that was once on land is now in the ocean, and that rises sea level. The Antarctic ice sheet is thinning at an accelerated rate, and there are warm currents beneath the ice shelves that melt said ice faster than it can be restored. Remember, Antarctica is a desert, and it takes a very long time for ice and snow to accumulate. If all of the ice melted, the global sea level would rise 60 meters. Over the past century alone, it has risen 4 to 8 inches. In the past 20 years, however, it has risen 0.13 inches a year, twice as fast as the 80 years before. Even a small increase in sea level can be devastating. It can cause destructive erosion, flooding of wetlands, contamination of soil, and loss of habitat for many fish, plants, and birds. When large storms hit land, powerful storm surges will come to destroy everything in their path. Hundreds of millions of people across the world live in areas that will become more and more vulnerable to flooding, having to abandon their homes and relocate. Some low-lying islands will be completely submerged. It's still not known how much sea level will rise by 2100. On one end, there are cities that say it will rise up to 2 meters, destroying many cities on the east coast of the United States. Other studies claim it could rise up to 7 meters, enough to swamp London. So sure, sea level will rise, but what else? Well, Antarctica's ice also plays a large role in influencing Earth's climate. Since it reflects about 80% of the sun's radiation, it helps to regulate temperatures around the world. Without it, things will just keep getting hotter. Currently, scientists are looking at how penguins, seals, and other animals are reacting to the warming waters around the Antarctic. Climate change is world-changing. Naturally, with such big news comes denial and controversy. Earth's climate system is very complex and very unpredictable. Even people who accept the scientific consensus disagree on who should address the problems the planet faces. Let's look at some of the arguments against the existence of climate change. Earth is not getting warmer. There are millions of temperature measurements and satellite observations that confirm that the planet is indeed getting warmer. Earth got warmer in the 1990s, but temperatures have leveled off since 1998. 1998 was actually hotter than most years before it. Since then, new record highs in temperature have been recorded. By nature, global warming has ups and downs. Climate change is natural. This is true, but many sources also show that recent global warming has been caused by human activity. Ice core data is very important to showing whether this is simply a high in the natural cycle, or if what Earth is experiencing is truly exceptional. 
Concentrations of CO2, methane, and nitrous oxide in the atmosphere exceed the highest concentrations in ice cores for the past 800,000 years. The sun's rays are causing global warming. This possibility was taken very seriously and studied by scientists, but research shows that these effects are too small in magnitude to account for the warming we've measured. In fact, the only mathematical models capable of replicating what Earth has experienced are ones that take into account human activity. Computer models are not reliable. Computer models take into account scientific laws and are constantly tested. Some individual studies can have flaws, but it's not credible to say that all of them do. The vast majority of these models show that global warming will continue. An increase in CO2 will help plants grow larger and faster, soaking up CO2 and stabilizing the problem. For many plants, only a small increase in CO2 levels will result in better growth. If it gets any higher than that, then these plants will lose population numbers and experience less growth. Weather predictions aren't very accurate. Why are climate predictions any different? Long-term average weather is much more predictable than hour-to-hour -hour weather. For example, in August we can predict the average temperature in February, but we cannot predict the temperature of a given day in February. It's important to understand that there is no way as of yet to know for absolute certain if we are causing this temperature rise. However, the scientific community across the globe are finding more and more evidence that human activity is indeed the cause. As the issue becomes more relevant, we realize that it is imperative that we understand the role that the polar regions have on climate change. If we look at how Antarctica was in the past and how it's reacting to climate change, we can more accurately predict climate change in the future and give that information to politicians who make policies to protect our environment. For example, we use Antarctic ice cores to determine the effect of greenhouse gases on temperature. In 2004, a three kilometer ice core was extracted, containing climate data from the past 800,000 years. If we understand how ice sheets are now, we can figure out how they have grown and shrunk in the past. From that, we can figure out how they will behave in the future. We can't say that we know for sure. However, there are a few things that we can say with confidence. The collective climate of our entire planet is a beautiful but complex system. Climate change occurs over a very long time, so the data we have collected in this short period of our history is subtle. However, perhaps that's good. Perhaps the fact that these changes are subtle means that we still have a chance to turn things around. Or perhaps this is a curse. These small measurements give our species more room to ignore the issue because it seems so small, so far in the future. We always talk about climate change using words like will, future, and eventually. We need to realize that this is not in the distant future. This is right now, and we have a chance to take caution before it's too late. If we work to convert to clean energy sources, only good will come from it. Oil is labeled as a non-renewable resource for a reason. It is also the catalyst for wars and conflicts. So even if we aren't responsible for climate change, we are responsible for ourselves. We live on this planet, and it will go on with or without us. Our society and what we have created are the only things in danger right now. So, as a species, let's make a choice. Will we treat the only planet we have with caution and respect, or will we exhaust it until it has nothing left to give? For some reason, that's a very difficult choice. Should it be?